What's up guys, it's your boy Jamaica here, coming at you with another deck tech. This is my Metal Work Colossus list. Um, I love Metal Work Colossus, I think it's one of the cooler cards um, that Pain Travel has seen. Um, the last seasons I've played this in are Season 10 and Season 12. They had two di very different looks. Uh, season 10 had Lake of the Dead, and it was a mono black build. This was during the time of Tempered Steel and uh, Cephalid Breakfast combo deck, so that deck had to be black. Because, um, well, honestly, uh, Lake of the Dead is a busted magic card, and you want to get things going fast, so Lake of the Dead was good for that. Mono Black also gave you a lot of removal and tutors, and Diabolic Tutor, so that was fun. Uh, season 12 was the Mono Blue version, which is kind of more similar to what this version is. It had, um, had little cards here. You can see Metal of Colossus, Upheaval, One with the Machine. Those are pretty sweet, so this, this version kind of mirrors more of the blue version. So it takes some cards from the black version and kind of puts them together. So uh, yeah, this is the list. Um, cloud Post, Glimmer Post. It is a Cloud Post ramp deck, basically. Uh, you can use all this colorless mana to good effect. It's very strong at powering out your uh, sort of mana bubbles here. Urza's Factory, good alternate win condition. Uh, and everything is basically revolved around casting Metal Colossus as fast as you can. So all the mana ramp here, the, we're using the Talismans, uh, the blue Talismans, in fact, because colorless mana is important. Um, that comes to play in the sideboard mostly, but Colorless Mana is pretty important here. Urzai Gold, there's no Hedron Archive, which is really interesting. So you need that four mana rock that makes two mana. So Urzai's Golem is just the thing we have. And then a single Gilded Lotus is pretty great. Um, I've always played the single Gilded Lotus in the blue version, so I don't see why I would not play that. Uh, for card drawing, um, usually in this spot I played Shimmer of Possibility, but Witching Well is now legal. I think it's from a Throne of Eldraine, so I've been trying that. It's not bad. It's kind of like the four man's uh, Hedron Eye basically, but it's, it, it comes down early. You know, it does add, um, I don't want to call it devotion. I guess just uh, helps cast Melrose Colossus. So, and then later just draws you cards. So it's an artifact that does something and does something else later. Uh, but one with the machine is a big card drawing payoff. You can kind of just, even like drawing four with an Urzai Golem is not that bad, but you really want to just cast like, you want to draw 11. <laughs> four mana draw 11 is a good rate. Also like, you know, off Gilded Lotus and other cards we have here, we can just draw a bunch. Then Upheaval, with all the mana you have from the world, Upheaval is just one of the strongest effects in Magic you can ever do. So you basically Upheaval and like put down all your stuff and then in the next two turns, your board's completely uh, rebuilt while your opponent's just playing like one land at a time. So... Upheaval is just a pretty amazing card in this deck. Uh, and then with all like the card drawings here, usually I had Fabricate, which uh, I don't have anymore. Uh, that was one of the compromises, I guess. We don't have a lot of like tutors, but you still draw a bunch of cards. So there are some like fun ofs I get to play because I'm drawing so many cards. Uh, Thranton Horror Gateway, it's kind of like a uh, Quicksilver Amulet, but for uh, Historic Permanence, Artifacts, Legendaries, and Sagas. So there are a couple Legendaries in the deck, so you kind of just flash that in. It's pretty great. Uh, Locks on Warhammer is really the best way to beat aggro decks. You attack for a 13, 10 flying or lifelink trampler. It's pretty good. <laughs> Mirror Works is kind of a good way to kind of uh, make extra copies of you know artifacts. It's good to like Urzai Golem. You can go like Mirror Works Urzai. You have two Ur Urzai Golems all of a sudden. So it's kind of a fun card. Uh, it's not really super great, but in the late game it kind of can go out of control. Especially like Witching Wells. I could see like just drawing a bunch of cards with Witching Well. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, Karn and Silver Golem, another alternate win condition. Uh, maybe something happens and they exile all your Metal Colossuses. Well, you can get a Karn and just start making all your uh, silly artifacts and the creatures and start swinging for the win. Uh, Triskillian is a good way to kind of just like ping down little creatures here. Smite of Isha will just take care of any random permanent that you um, think is detrimental to your plan. I'm not really sure. Uh, Padim here will protect your permanents. You're pretty much going to draw an extra card every turn anyway. You'll probably have the most highest artifacts, so... Being pretty great. And a new card I'm trying out is uh, Muzio, Visionary Architect. It's kind of just like a big impulse for uh, artifacts. But uh, it, it should be pretty fun with Metal Work Colossus. If I have a Colossus out and I tap four, I, I look at the top 11 cards. And then um, I just get to pick an artifact. <laughs> right? For the highest... Yeah, so I just get any artifact. I feel like, like, I don't know, like a third of my deck is artifacts. So this shouldn't miss. This should have like a... This shouldn't really miss that often. So, yeah, that should be fun. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not, I don't know. They're also Legendary, Padim, and Muzio, so you could flash them with their Temporal Gateway. That's kind of fun, so I kind of just tried it out. <laughs> Why not? Sideboard, mostly 
uh, build to beat aggro decks. Um, it is kind of the bane of the deck. Uh, you kind of have to rely on like Glimmer Post to gain you a bunch of life, but really, in the first like couple turns, you're just kind of setting up, so you can't really die to things like that. So Spatial Contortion is the reason why I'm playing all his Talons. It's over something like a Demir uh, Sigma or something like that. You do take damage for blue mana, but you really need a ton of blue mana, honestly. So Spatial Contortion is a really good removal spell. Another extra Warhammer and Etch Champion, a new addition to Season 16. This guy is hard to kill if you have Metal Craft. So even like a Etch Champion with a Locks on Warhammer will kind of like swing the game back in your favor. So great at blocking and great at kind of finishing the game. Uh, evacuation, kind of the mini upheaval, but just for creatures. Uh, I don't actually play a lot of creatures. There's only eight creatures in the main deck. So evacuation is a pretty good sort of like fog effect. Defense. Stoke Rebuttal, two mana counter spell. Why not? It's for like other control decks. Soul Guide Lantern for uh, Graveyard Hate. Also good against the uh, new aggro slide deck. Uh, Zenith Flare is kind of a big deal, which is also why I have Orbs of Warding. But, uh, Zenith Flare kind of relies on cards in their graveyard, so you can kind of just nuke their graveyard when they try to Zenith Flare you, and that's that. Also good against Reanimator as well. So, I'm going to play in a tournament today, playing in the APAC tournament. I'm not actually going to be streaming, I just will be recording, so you'll get. The entire tournament, I will record actually the entire tournament. So uh, if you want to skip ahead to any of the rounds, maybe you played you play and you want to see my perspective, go ahead and look at the description below. There'll be timestamps for each round. And I will record the entirety of the tournament, whether I'm in it or not. So it will be a bit spoiler free. So enjoy the show and let's see how I do. All right, um, I actually got the buy round one, so I'm just going to live commentate the first round of this match. Uh, we got, uh, I don't know what the, these opponents are playing. Like I said, it's the first round, I literally got the buy, so they're just sitting around doing nothing. going to check out what's going on here. Sig Rigger Cup Float, maybe a Merfolk deck. Uh, it looks like a Grixis deck. A Talisman Creativity is really awesome. All these Talismans are legal from Modern Horizons. So it's a really good, I, I think we're missing mana off in season 15, so this is really awesome. Deep Root Elite, alright, the, the Merfolk are here. And the Jade Bearer, I'm, I'm surprised this mana base is just looking great right now. My Jade Bearer is going to, whenever another Merfolk you control in his battlefield, ooh, this nice and aggressive. Oh, and a Sigur the Cutthroat, we're going to get an extra card, that's some nice energy, I like that. Alright. A 3-5 is pretty hard to deal with for uh, the Grixis deck, I would think. It's going to play Champion of Wits. I like this. This little value creature. Draw 2, just card 2. You draw equal to its power, and the power is 2 right now, so it's a nice little value engine. Yeah, ooh, cruel to me. I have another Champion of Wits. I like, I like where this is going already. No land drop, though. That's not good. Champion might want to step in front of the 1-1s. One I don't know if blocking with the 3-5, but unlocking the 3-5 is super great. Ooh, Mural Regery, another pretty uh, new lord for this archetype. Everyone gets a little bigger. Yeah, this is a great start for the Merfolk deck. I'm just surprised that, like, they got to cast a double blue spell and two green spells in the first three turns. <laughs> That's magic sometimes. All right, frantic search. Then I'll look for something. If I had to guess, they're playing maybe living lore, so maybe they're just trying to like put stuff in their graveyard. Frantic search is not really a control card per se, so it's it's, it's much over a card where you want stuff in your graveyard. So they got a champion of wits, another thought erasure in their graveyard. Uh, sad thing about casting a frantic search, um, with the with the mana rock is that you can't untap the mana rock, so now you're kind of just stuck. And this is um, 11 damage right here. So one short from dying, but I don't know what combination of cards could kind of come out of this to help uh, Rix's player here. Molten Slaggy, I didn't really think about that. Maybe I should play it in the Hypergenesis list. Well, a, what is that, a terror? Oh, cut the ribbons. I do like cut the ribbons a lot. So that takes out the Lord. Still, though, a two turn clock. There is six damage on the board, as is. Ooh, another Sovereign. So Lords on Lords for the uh, Merfolk player. 
We're kind of back in the same position, and then deeper delete is going to trigger again. I'm going to put it on the Sovereign. Um, I don't hate that, I guess. Another Jade Bearer. Oh, man. Interesting they didn't put it on the creature that could attack right now. Um, that way they could have gotten a bit of damage, honestly. Yeah, so they could have actually gotten 12, I think. I'm, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I'm pretty sure they could have just gotten 12. Because they could have just, like, put counters on this. Because the Jade Bearer puts a counter on, and then this... Right, so they could have actually just killed them. But, you know, the merciful gods they are. So we'll just let them buy them a turn. I, except, like I said, I don't know if they can, can draw to get out of this. Another Frantic Search. I wouldn't even cast spells at this point. I want to, like, keep my... Preserve my kind of, like, secrets out here. Alright, so they are playing Living Lore with Cruel. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though. Another Frantic Search. Not really getting anywhere, though, with this. It's trying to storm off. And Merfolk Deck's going to take round one. Fast start. Um, like I said, I'm actually really surprised that the mana actually worked out. They're playing like one drop green spells into two drop double blue spells. <laughs> so <laughs> with like three drop double blue spells. So it's it's interesting. I mean, Jade Bear is not really the greatest turn one play, so uh I could see it being like delayed a turn. Yeah, they could have killed them last turn, I just don't know. They could have just like put it put a bunch of cowards and other things. I don't I think they could target other things, right? Yeah, I think they could have just like loaded up a single Jade Bearer there. Oh well. Round two. Game two, rather. Um, Dragon's player is going to have to just kill everything in sight. I think that's like, if you're a control deck, you should be able to kind of deal with the board as is every time, every turn. So. Didn't really see a lot uh, from the Grixis deck, though, though. Though in the past there have been like Living Lord Cruel to Medium decks by Briar Moss. So maybe they're similar. Alright, no one drop. I don't think I don't think there's any good one drops. There's Mist Caller as a one drop blue. It's really good against Hypergenesis, but you could just kill it as a Hypergenesis player. Silver Girl Adept showing Core Hell Commander. Like we're in modern all over again. Silver Girl's legal again, that's awesome. I have to rebuild that uh the wizard deck. Ah, oh, that wizard deck was fun. I might have to rebuild that. I think this whole season for me is just gonna be me rebuilding the decks. I don't know if I can even have a, a complete new thought right now. I think like I mean the hypergenesis list does have a new look to it, so that's kinda cool. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think that it's better for me to just like play what I want to play versus to try to bring out, bust out something completely new. Because I have like, I have just at least like, all the decks I, could, I used to play, I could just play again. So it would be fun, I guess, for the newer ones to see all the old decks come back again. Evolving Wilds, probably getting a forest. Level up this Merfolk here to a level 3, I imagine. Uh, level up is a sorcery, so they decided not to do it. Interesting. Another core home commander. This kind of does set themselves up for like a really big slag storm. Uh, slag storm, a premier sort of uh, board wipe in this spot, especially in these colors. There it is. Dive down is going to save one of the Coral Commanders. That's not bad. Still, kind of, still kind of a 3 for 1 for the most part. Kind of just took a, creature, took a card. What the Coral Homes does get to live. Get to level up to a 3 3. Sovereign, though. But mana. Still, another Slag Storm be pretty great here. Also, even like playing a, uh, a living lore on the slagstone would be pretty nice. 
I cut. It's going to take out the Perfolk Sovereign. And yeah, this is a much different game from the game one from the Grixis deck. They've uh, taken care of most of the cards on board. Just trying to survive. That's what you want to do. And so you can kind of resolve your cruel tomato. But the, the, island, the Merfolk deck does play islands, so you can expect some counter magic to come through. Deep root belief. So pretty much they have cruel to me and mana, I think, here. Because they could just use the slag keep to produce two mana. I think I should put this in my hypergenesis list. They're pretty good. I'm gonna slap it after the sorting out my cruel to me and mana. You can already tell. It's happening. Here we go. Turn seven cruel to him right on time. Really though, um, just getting the hand empty for um, the Norfolk player is going to be really uh, tough. They're going to draw three cards. The life change will happen. Who they discarded? Three sky divers. Jeez. Maybe they're not playing many counter spells, but they had all creatures. No level ups, so I might have drawn a creature or some sort of a reactive spell here. I'm guessing it's like a negate or a mana leak. Love to see living lore, just hitting the cruel, just starting the loop. Spellweaver Helix, ooh. So they get to exile two cards, so they have a slag storm and a cruel. So every time they cast one of the spells uh, from that's exiled by the helix, the other spell will be cast. So they have a slag storm here. They can just keep chaining off Cruels. Here we go. Slags from each creature. Cruel to me, it's going to get cast as well. Because they're just kind of paired. That's it. That was enough. No moss. No moss. Rixus, Spellweaver, lore, cruel, Living Lore. I take game two. Been a good match. Um, I think it went pretty atypical to a sort of a control deck. Just kill a couple things and do your big thing. Cruel to me is a hard card to come back from. Rarely have I ever seen that happen. Game three, Murfolk going to be on the play here. They're going to mulligan. Uh, Grixis keeps seven. Ooh, mulligan to five for the Murfolk player. That's kind of tough against a, a deck of probably full of removal. We'll see what happens. Green. Turn one Jade Bearer. I have the greatest turn one play, like I mentioned. But it is what it is. Double Forest. Oof. I think this is the mana base coming into play here. Um, there are, like I said, there are green wolf folk in the deck, so... Looks like they're gonna do, yeah, deep root elite. A lot of the big lords were double blue. Cut's gonna take out the deep root elite. Um, so like Coralum Commander, Murfolk Sovereign, double, both double blue. Oh, another elite. So they got the green half. They're casting spells, they're doing things. That's not too bad, but pretty soon they're gonna need some islands. I think we're gonna play these kind of like two color. Hyper aggressive decks where you have like us. Uh, ooh, another cut. Um, kind of like two colors from like really low curves. I didn't think you want to play Tendo Ice Bridge. Like a single force would have been great here, but a Tendo Ice Bridge would have helped you cast some of your blue spells, at least for one a one shot. So uh, Tendo Ice Bridge should be in a lot of decks, I think. In some numbers, if you're playing a two color deck, I think you should really consider Tendo Ice Bridge or like some dual lands. Or just playing basic for basic of your second color. Alright, this might be, okay, it looks like a frantic search. 
this is tough. Um, like I said, when you're using um, when you're using a uh, mana from your rocks, you can't untap the rocks. So now they have black and red mana. But maybe they have like a spell gear helix or something like that. They had a living lore. They couldn't really do that this turn because their blue mana came from their talisman. Right, they do have a helix. Looks like they're going to do the same thing. Copy the cruel and the slag storm. Or maybe, probably not to cut the ribbons. All right. Well, that means they have another cut in their hand. All that can, that can mean, really. Ooh. So they just ribbons for zero, so they can. Hmm, that was weird. I didn't get the copy. Interesting. I don't know how that worked out. Did it trigger? I felt like it triggered there. I guess not. I don't know, that was weird. Is it a may or a must? Maybe they said no accidentally. I don't know, that's weird. I have to ask them later. I don't know why you'd say no to that, but misclicks certainly do happen. I don't know about some people. For me, it's like 3 in the morning right now. So I am prone to misclicks for sure. I could have sworn that the Aftermath spell would have triggered that. This is not a good spot, honestly. They need to produce a sort of like a slag storm or something while the shields are down. Because these Jade Bearers are getting in, and for, uh, the Grixis player is at 8. They're going to need to produce something here. Slag heap. I don't know what slag heaps in my... I want to put slag heaps in my uh, hyperdenesis list. I've, de I've decided. There's so many things you need to do in the early turns that you kind of just need to... Slag... I'll give you pretty good. Okay, living lore. Uh, let's see what, what spells we've got. We only got frantic searches, but it is a 3-3 that blocks. So we got that going. <laughs> It will stem the bleeding just a little bit. Still, no blue mana for the Murfolk deck, but they've gotten this far. We just gotta get a little further. Uh, another blue source from the yeah, Cruel deck, and they can kind of actually cast a Cruel Tomatum off the dome if they felt like it. Got to charge the uh, Molten Slag Heap. I was gonna charge those pools. You never know when you need that mana. For big ribbons, like, far. Always want to charge. All right, it looks like the Living Lord, a 3-3, has stabilized quite a bit. I think once uh, the Murphy player plays, plays a couple islands, the game might turn around really quickly, so uh, the Grixis player is going to have to figure something out here. Right, charges the pool this time. All right, Malice in the Palace will help find the card. Puts on scries at the bottom, probably just another random land or something to cast. All right, there is a blue source, Thorn and Falls, but it's constantly tapped, so that might open up a couple of possibilities. The Merfolk player here. Rixis, come on. Get something going. Find a slag storm. Do something. Slag storm would take out the living lore, but you kinda need to the rest. Let's see what we got. Takes a dive down. 
So he's all blue cards. Reedery, Kopala, uh, Silver Girl Adept, uh, two Reedery's, and Sig River. Paula is actually randomly bugged. Kind of learned this today. Um, it's from the bug blog. Uh, the bug is that if you're watching this, thinking about playing this purple deck. Is Paula wa war and wave then correctly increases the cost of spells by two for each more focused spell targets. It, that's directly from the bug blog. So that's something we found personally. Um, I don't know what that means exactly, but it seems advantageous for purple player. Not that they probably didn't know because the bot's been down with the bugs. So. Tell you anything about bugs. We'll have to test that later. I'll have to test that. Alright. I think you actually have to frantic search. Yeah. You gotta find something. If anything, another island for maybe the cast of cruel that's in your hand. Try to get back into this game. Sign Oblivion and a mountain go to the bin. Cut! He's gonna cut the uh, Reedry. Can't get the cruel out. That's so weird. I guess you can't put split cards on there? I guess because the card name is Cut to Ribbons, and the card they're only casting on the stack is Cut? Is that what I'm like kind of reading into this? There is a Ribbons. Will this work this time? I guess that doesn't work? So many things we're learning today. That's like the third cruel to that could have been cast? I wonder. I guess I'll just try to scribe all this really quick before this match is over. Let's see. Felix. They must. A split card has the same name as a spell if either of its names is that spell's name. So this should work. That should work. Split card has the same name as a spell if either of its names is that spell's name. Okay. Rule to meet him the hard way. We'll get a cut the ribbon. So I guess that's a new bug that we've just discovered. Doesn't cast the cut. I don't know if they're actually saying no, but I guess they have stabilized here. Alright, well, despite all the... maybe... The trigger did happen, it, it definitely did happen, but... I don't know if they really decided to cast it or not, but regardless, I guess they got the win. Maybe they're just showing off for the camera. All right, round two. 
a hey, dreadful Metal Colossus deck. If I didn't get to play, I will keep it. I always want to see a turn to Sting. Not much else going on, but I mean, I'm sure I'll draw into something. I haven't actually played much of the season, only in the tournaments. Ooh, that's a good draw. A couple of, uh, a couple of like test games here and there, but this is a really good start. So I'm already gonna have turn uh, four minutes by turn. I did auger. Okay, I guess my phone's playing zombie, so I get to test out the anti-aggro strike on my sideboard. This guy on tap. Either just like safety upheaval, maybe. I don't know. Death Baron. New card here in season 16. That's just another zombie lord. Death Touch is a very relevant ability, though. Walking a nightmare. Ooh, that's a good card. Kind of jump in the way of some things. Also, just reduces the cost of Colossus itself. So now it's like five, but I could just flash it and block something. Another Death Baron would be kind of annoying, would kind of like kill that. Okay. Annoying. Another annoying card. Yeah, there's seven. Let's see another Glimmer Pose. That'd be pretty nice. Triskelion does take out some things. I could take out the uh, the Lord of the Undead here. The Lord of the Undead is way more important because it does like kind of grave digger back uh, the guys. Another lord, gee. Good lord. Store a card. I think it's time to upheaval. Um, I think it's just time to upheaval here. I don't get much value out of it. It's kind of bad, but... We're in desperate times here. This is a little rough. I need to reset and start over. Get the trigger from the auger. Hopefully, don't have a one drop. That would just really be bad for my next upheaval turn. That's kind of annoying. That means, like, next turn they'll have, like, a 2 2. Pretty unfortunate. Um, I do this. All right, upheaval. Times are tough here. Times are tough. I, I have to play the cloud host back first. So we're just starting over. No big deal. Get rid of a factory, and I'll get rid of an island. Everything else seems okay. Alright, so just starting over, no big deal. Except they have a turn on Sarcomancy this time. It is going to be a bit annoying, but I can get this guy out pretty quick. I am going to gain a couple of life here. Draw another Glimmer Post, I've already raved. Is 
the curve is pretty good. They have one drop, two drop, three drop. So I'm going to have to draw something. But do you not bet? Right, this will make the Colossus one. I can't bring them all out of once, though. I might have to play the Bedeem just to block, but then next turn they're going to play the Death Baron, and then everything becomes Death Touchy, so it's like really annoying. I'll, I'll think about, it depends on what I draw. Let me see what I draw next turn. I have 5 mana available, um, unless I draw a Glimmer Post, I have 6 mana. A Reaver? That's a nice kind of go wide. It's gonna mass a zombie. Pretty much a little better than just playing the auger. I have to play the Bedeem just to block. Okay, Cloud Pope. It gives me a ton of mana. It won't die next turn, but it is concerning. Three, four, five mana. Could play the Padim. It would t cost me a life. Yeah, I think it's just better. It'll, it'll save me a couple of damage here. I do take one for it, but I'll go to four here, assuming the next play is just a lord. I'm gonna, I'm gonna access to a lot of mana next turn. Hopefully, I draw a glimmer post. Honestly, I actually wonder why I draw a glimmer post. It would give me like four life. Kind of fog this turn. I have to block. Um. I could go to one. <laughs> I don't think going to one's very good. I might need to draw the card, honestly. What's the difference between like going to four and going to one here? Really, realistically, is there a difference between going to four and going to one? I think so, honestly. Go to one, I guess. I was going to block, but then I realized this doesn't even matter at this point, so I might as well just get a card out of this. Maybe I draw another like upheaval, but then I can't even cast the upheaval because I have this talisman out. Card. Okay, that's... A bunch of cards that don't do anything, so... Alright. Alright. Okay, so in this matchup I'd like to take all this dirtily stuff and just kind of bring a bunch of removal. I got spatial contortions, evacuation, stack this here. That's champion, the extra box on Warhammer. Um, Gateway's kind of slow. Muzio's, Muzio does block. That's slow though. Deem, Deem's okay too. I feel like Huge's Hexer is not that bad. It is a bit slow though. I kind of, I kind of at least like one or two one with the machines. I just kind of play straight up. Now people also a bit slow, so I'll cut like at least like one. Maybe even like two appeals, honestly. Actually, yeah, you know what? Black has no way of dealing with artifacts, so Padim's actually not that super strong. I will give the Muzio. I think I can try out Muzio. It'll be okay. Plosses I never cut. I actually never cut them. Typically, I don't really cut them in this matchup because the real plan is just like locks on hammer plus uh, Colossus, and that's just kind of enough. Maybe his Muzio is just the, the cut here. I have a bunch of cards I have to bring in. I'm gonna just play one upheaval. Upheaval wasn't super impressive there. They kind of like got back on board really quickly. 
I'll just play one of people. That's pretty strong at like ending the game though. Okay, that or the Muzio. I have to decide. I think Muzio just has to go. Maybe it's, maybe it's just a bit slow. What do you want with the machine? I just want to play Muzio. <laughs> I just want to try Muzio. But if, if I'm at a point in the game where I'm activating Muzio, I think the game's like over one way or the other. Try this. My curve is significantly lower too, so Muzio is not really super great. I think Muzio is great for slower games. Yes, I can keep this. I can cast a spatial contortion. If I draw into the land, I get an Urzai Golem and a Gilded Lotus, and we got her off to the races. But luckily, I have the Urza's Factory to cast a spatial contortion. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have kept this hand. That's the only reason why I kept it. A one draw. Um, I might wait for a Undead uh, Augur. Let's see. Let's see if they like play a card pre combat. I don't want to. I kind of want to kill a lord, honestly. Yeah, I think a lord's just more threatening. They have like so many lords. <laughs> Two. Like, if I kill a Lord, I save, like, 3 damage of the 2 here. 3 mana is their money spot, for sure. Oh, this is gonna, I'm gonna get punished if they have, like, Liliana's Mastery or something. Witching Well is a good draw here. That sets up the rest of my turn. I do enjoy Witching Well as an uh, a difference between that and the Shimmering. Oh, this is good. I'll keep that on top. I'll put this island on the bottom. So I'm gonna gain a couple life. So not too bad, not too bad. Maybe evacuation as well to just kind of like reset some of these things. I kill this lord. Death Baron's gotta go. That saved me three life. That's pretty good. That. Not too bad. And I have the evacuation up next turn's Urzai Golem. Ur Golem's Eye. I, I keep saying it wrong. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll take another. I mean, I'm going to take some damage off the probably. Um, the probably Lord they have. But I'll get a good evacuation off uh, in the next coming turn. Leech Ridden Swamp, jeez. Okay, yet another Lord. It will take seven now. I'm gonna go back up to about uh, nine. Or eight, I'm sorry. I'll go up to ten with Glimmer Post. I need to draw something. I guess I can start making tokens. After I evacuate here. So I have five mana exactly here to evacuate. They don't have to do anything as lethal attacks. They don't have to put anything on the board, but if they do, pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> More thing. Be nice. I do have the Witching Well too to draw a bunch of cards. Right. Get out of here, guys. Everyone out. Everyone out! Everyone out! Evacuate! There's a fire in the building. Alright. Ooh, they had a, a one-drop. Okay. Alright, I might have to just Witching Well here. Let me just set up my draw first. We'll do the draw Colossus. Um... Oh, those cards are very exciting. Enough mana. Um, I can just pass. I can just make a guy here. I can just start making creatures. I don't until I get enough mana to like make a creature and pop the uh, witching well. 
pretty good control here. I mean, they do trade, but it's not a big deal. Another go wide plan. I could just take eight, <laughs> draw a bunch of cards, or take two. Yeah, I think I'll just take it. I need to draw a bunch of cards. I need to figure out something here. Maybe I draw another evac evacuation here. So maybe we should have done this first, because maybe I draw another evacuation. Okay. Not good. I'm not dead just yet. <laughs> Close. Okay, just to make sure I have a bunch of mana. I, I still have mana. Three, four, five. So I'll play one more. Time. Those witching wells did not hit. Sad to say. Wait, my opponent has another lord in their hand. I'm just dead. Wow. Okay. Just did not did not get a creature. My hand was like okay. Maybe I could have gotten a better hand. Everyone. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Didn't really draw anything. Had a lot of looks. Hey, didn't get anything. Oh well. All right, round three with the Pain Dreadful Metal or Colossus deck. Um, sure, I can keep it. Number one, Cloudflow is always a good start. Though no proposed yet. Birds of Paradise, man, that is so great, isn't it? Pain Dreadful. It's been like hovering. But I guess because of the two cent barrier, it's finally here. The next turn I can go Talisman and the Witching Well. Pretty good start. Rights of Flourishing. Ooh. Okay. This might help me. <laughs> okay. Get the draw an extra card. I don't know if you want the Ramp the Cloud Post deck, but we'll see. Let's see who this ends up being better for. This, this, set up the draw with the switching well. Bottom both of these. Hopefully, they're doing something very broken with this price of flourishing because I'm gonna just kind of get far ahead. I have a bunch of mana now, I have double cloud posts, so my situation seems fine, but. Path of Discovery. Every creature in his battlefield controls floor. Okay. Um, let's just cast this. Cast eight. Elver Colossus. Turn three, eleven, eleven. Thanks to the rights of flourishing, and a couple of cloud posts. I get the one with the machine for like a lot next turn. Why? Am I dead? I could be dead. I might be dead here. Okay, they keep exploring. They get another thing. Are they gain some life? I could be just dead. Well, they have to have another Citadel, but see what happens. All 
Alright, so the Waddle Go Brothel gains some life. So if anything's under like three or less, they're just like drawing a ton of cards. They're getting so much man they're getting so much life here. I guess they still have to get another bull citadel out. So they can't really like do anything else until they can definitely just pop me here. Hmm. I could draw a bunch of cards as well. I don't want them to untap. They might have actually, yeah, they might have just whiffed, because if you put a land on top, then you just kind of whiff. I'm just thinking about what to do here. I could... Hmm. I only have like two, I only get like two mana for the upheaval. Not too bad. They kind of have to start over as well, but I think my start might be a bit faster. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think there's a way I can, like, machine and upheaval all at once. Just really trying to think of the right line here. I don't think I want to uh, let my opponent untap. <laughs> I think I just have the upheaval here. Can't really attack into the 810. I'll leave a cloud post. Start with this. The witching well here. Um, up. Not that too. I don't need all these islands, I guess. I may need one island. I'll, I'll get rid of a one with machine. We can keep the muzzio. Muzzio can stay. So I get their like right to flourishing advantage here, so that's pretty good. <laughs> they have to discard so many cards. So they they've really gotta choose. So that was like a pretty big upheaval for me. They discard eleven cards. <laughs> oh man. That's a silly combo. That's a very interesting combo. I like that. So I gotta like deal with Wild Growth Rocker, I guess. That's the only way they gain life. Or Path of Discovery. I get either of those effects. Be pretty devastating for me. Get this card. Stuff. Okay, there's another upheaval. I'll just keep close these cards. If they want to get anything done, they have to play this, their rights of flourishing, right? Well, maybe not. I guess I can take it slow, play a Wild Growth Walker. But, like, I'm going to get Triple Cloud Pokes here. Big old start. Seven. I do have seven mana. Next, about to go to an overdrive in a second. I draw eleven cards, assuming my Colossus lives. So they got their path. The next turn, they, if they have another land, they can play the Citadel. I could just upheaval again, honestly. <laughs> 
I might just upheaval again. Let's see. Let me let me attack. Let's see if they block. I don't think they really can block. I think I'm just upheaving again. <laughs> Back. Sucks I have to play this land though. Upheaval again. Um. Um. Up. Bottom of this one. Did I play? Yeah, I played a land. Alright, Muzzy has got to go. It's the factory. It's an island. I do miss the. I do get my land. I don't get my land drop here, so. It's kind of annoying I had to upheaval there. For another three cards. <laughs> I might be at a disadvantage, but I do. I am going to get it back with like a bunch of cloud posts. I vote people twice and I still haven't won, so this is kind of awkward, but. I think it's important that I do that. Bottom, this is top. It'll just get the classes out faster. Maybe I'll just play one with the machine next, like in a turn two. Mana. Next turn, Lotus into like Colossus will be kind of nuts. I have to play the Glimmer Post next turn. I guess if, I guess they can play the Citadel and just kind of they could play a Citadel, but then next turn I think I have Colossus coming down. They kind of, so, so they have to set up like Citadel path like um thingy. So they have the their turns are kind of scripted. Okay, so they are Glimmer Post, can't even fly back. This guy, how much does this cost? Two, one, two. Um, draw 11 cards. Another upheaval. That's pretty good. We'll have a spine. That's perfect. I can fully spine something here. I don't need this third cloud post, do I? I'm not really sure if I need it. Mm. Don't need all these Ur's eyes, Golem. Discard so many cards. I don't have colored mana. I don't need. I don't need any of these anymore. <laughs> I might need this. Uh, I might need this cloud post. I think I will. I think I will just like. I have a ton of mana. <laughs> Yeah, they can't do both things at once. They've already discovered they've already killed two path of discoveries. I could just spine like if they play a citadel, I might just spine it. Okay. Citadel.
Maybe I just kill this path of discovery. Just let things happen. <laughs> let everything else kind of do its thing. Oh, and Ilya. So they have to have two cards left. So I think like the spine will be good on this path of discovery. This isn't a crazy game. It's only game one. Um. Either path this or path this or spine this. I spine the path here. Throw another loan cards. I don't want to get to the point where like all of citadels me and kills me. Um, I play a land. I did. So did I play land? I guess I play a talisman here. So I don't know if I could really attack. Huh. Yeah, I'm just gonna hang out, I guess. I have all my cloud posts, so I don't Okay, I only need like one or two islands. Or Mirror Works is pretty funny. I think I'll just keep Mirror Works. I don't need this. I'm gonna deck myself soon, so I guess I don't need this anymore. I think I have everything I need, honestly, to kill my opponent. I'm gonna upheaval again next turn. I think that'll just ensure the victory. So I should keep the Urzai Golem. Hold on. Okay. Um. This. 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 I don't go. I don't know how many I have left. All right. I don't need a million cloud posts. <laughs> Good on that. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. No idea if they can actually attack. I'm gonna upheaval them again, so need that much, okay, so I didn't need any I have two blue sources now. Cool. I I guess I had all these. Hold on. To make that much blue mana. Wait. Upheaval for like the third time. <laughs> it is a response. Okay. Everything comes back. 12 mana floating. Don't know what my opponent can do from here. I'm gonna like just drop a billion things. This Colossus is coming coming for free. I don't know what my opponent can do from here. I guess they could like dome me for 10. But they have, don't have 10 non-land permanents. I forgot it's non-land permanents. They've upheavaled literally three times. <laughs> the third one has the stick. Okay. Right, cloud posts. I play. I'm gonna play the mirror works first. This is the most jankiest card. Okay. 
Gilded Lotus. Okay, A2. This guy's free. Okay. So <laughs> Getting sideboarding. I had to upheaval three times for this to be good. Uh, I guess I like spatial contortion. It does kill like wild ghost rockers early, birds of paradises. It's pretty good. Um, Kadeem seems alright. Muzio might be too slow for you, Muzio. Read Bolus' Citadel. Target each opponent. Wow, what a thing! I think I need Stoke rebuttals in my deck. Evacuation might seem okay too, honestly. Evacuation seems kind of sweet. Raskillians okay. Mirror works okay. I like I like the hammer here. Mine is an out to like that enchantment. That was really funny. <laughs> oh, I hate that. I want to keep everything, honestly. <laughs> Maybe evacuation. I don't need evacuation, but they put a lot of creatures on the board. And they have the right to flourishing, so maybe it's just a bit slow. I have upheavals. I think I can just upheaval my opponent. Be okay. What a cut. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I, I really had, I really caught up with all the Citadel. They Citadeled off. They went off. They started to go off, but nothing happened. I need to trim some cards, I guess. Oh, they were off. The people was really good. <laughs> it's either Spine or Karn. Karn's pretty good at, at killing my opponent. I mean, I got the just No, there are a lot of X ones. It could it could kill a wild growth blocker if necessary. I'll just go to two witching wells, I guess. I know people are very obnoxious. <laughs> this deck seems really sweet. This is a sweet brew. I can contortion something. Pretty much the only reason I'm keeping it. I have a cloud post too. Throw one cloud post is always really strong. No one ever suspects getting contortion. Ooh. Actually, I actually have to ramp into the. Maybe I have to take a turn off for contortion. I'd, I'd rather just contortion a wild gopher rocker. If I see one, it's on site. Like, yeah, so I think I'll just cast the Talisman here. So I can get a quick uh, Grand Temporal Gateway. Love to see a Padim. Padim would be pretty great at protecting my creature. I think it's like mid range, sort of like not aggro matchups. They're really like some of the upheaval decks best matchups. If you get, if they let you just kind of walk and beat it, get a bunch of mana, it's really strong. Especially when they write to flourishing me, I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> I'd love this. I try to get this temporal gateway out, and maybe I can just draw like a good artifact. It's the rights. I have a discovery. Actually, no, I'm, for this, I'm going to catch the Urzai Golem. It's just kind of better with the upheaval in my hand already. And I have a Urza's Factory I can, I can start activating soon. I'm 
other creatures. So it has a combo with Wild Grove Rock. It's the only reason the card's in there. I have to kill the walker. Alas. Okay, Sylvan Library, good card. Although your deck doesn't do a whole lot. Doesn't feel like it does a whole lot without the pieces. Ooh, Karn's pretty big. I think it's I think it's a Karn time? I guess it's Karn time. Alright. Back here for four. Karn Daddy. I love Karn. It's such a it's such a good alternate win condition to this deck. You can just amass so much mana and you have all these dumb mana rocks that don't do anything. It can be really strong. I'm like, man, my back is so arched. I'm like full gamer stance because after they play at Citadel, I'm like, ooh, god. Okay, here's said Citadel. Okay, oh god. I could die. I could die, maybe. I don't know. I got punished, but then again, I couldn't stop the path of discovery from more side. Sure. Yes. I have a win condition in the field. They can we can say Metal Work Colossus upheaval. I don't think that's good right now. Upheaval. They might just die to my force here. If they play more spells, I mean, once they gain, I guess they can just get a life here. What happens? Okay, good. So every creature is really good. Um, I, I'm sure they don't have any like other creature permanents. Maybe I should be playing. I think I've lost this game because <laughs> I tapped out. I don't know what I could have done against the Wild Wolf Walker though. Yeah, I think I'm going to bring evacuations in the deck. I don't know about Spatial Contortion. I'm wondering how they're going to kill me. I guess they can kill me with like a gi these gigantic creatures. Okay, there's Return of the Major. Oh, they're just cycling through. I'm just like watching this. So they're exploring. Every time they explore, they gain the life off the walker. So the walker is pretty big here. I'm going to just concede. Look at my deck a million times. Dang. I could bring an Etch Champions. They just like block. The uh, wild gulf rockers, I kind of in all the time. Switch that up. I'll have to play a bit more passively, though. I think just killing is just a bit too slow for this match. So is spine. As good as spine is, I think it's probably just a bit slow. I can cut the use. I think more of it's controlling route. I really like where do I play these uh witching wells? Yeah, I have to go to three Colossuses. Oh people's pretty strong. I think I have to keep that in the deck. I have to keep all the mana rocks. I can't never like cut the mana rocks. It. See if this works out. I don't know if it will, but it will tell.
guess. It's a decent start. I just really have to get rid of one of the permanents of like Wild Ghost Walker or um the other card, uh Path of Discovery. I think Path of Discovery is a little bit easier to take out. Sweet. Get the rest. Get Stoke Rebuttal, Urzai Golem. I think upheaval. Interesting. I think that was the worst card in my hand. It must mean they have like answers to all of this. It's totally. Oh, this is okay. The effect it only really deals with metalwork losses. Right, they've they've got a different plan over there. I'm gonna play this Edge Champion. Hope that's enough. <laughs> My plan is play Edge Champion and hold up Stoic Rebuttal for something scary. I mean, they have duresses, so we got that going, but counter spell. Lunar posts will draw. Edge champ. Next turn I can start pumping out uh, factory tokens. I have, I have to counter this. The pivotal part of their game plan. I, I just, that just has to go. And but yeah, that's all they got. I mean if they got they have no like mana acceleration or anything like that, so This is all I have. Um, hopefully that was just enough. I can't put up much resistance. Now they've got really nothing on board. Make a factory token. This just has to be enough. It just has to be enough for this game. <laughs> you totally just draw a bunch of cards here. But like I said, they're they're sort of like playing it's a bit expensive. They have, they have the right in a six drop, a four drop, and a two drop, so it's like a two turn thing. They could easily do there's a citadel. I guess I could start chaining off um the walker. They have the path, okay. The guys. Right? That's weird that they, I guess it was just on their top of the deck. I don't have a spine, but I would like an upheaval. One with the machine will draw four cards. I guess that's enough. I can still counter spells off the citadel. There is an upheaval here. I guess I just wait. I'll attack with this guy. I can't really block. I guess I took technically upheaval now. That's going to be very good. How do I lose this? If I don't upheaval now. I think they just gain a million life.
Yeah, I guess I'm just kind of upheaval, I guess. Um, I already played a land, right? Yeah, I didn't really plan up healing at the very beginning of all that sequence, but I might as well just like do it. <laughs> I think I just have to do it. I don't know if I have time for double cloud posts. I need the Warhammer eventually. How many lands am I keeping? Do I have to keep this land? So I guess I have to cut the Warhammer. Oh, I've got one more card. I just. I'm just going to bend this island, I guess. It's going to be rough. Because <laughs> I, I have to get the rebuttal in case I draw another island. I, I'm more than likely to draw an island. Like Their hand was slow, but my hand's also pretty slow. But I can get it off to a good start after just playing three posts. Yeah, but definitely had the upheaval there. I don't think I could have gone away with anything else. Yeah, I think I'm just going to contortion that, honestly. Didn't draw that second island, so maybe keeping this was really bad. Yeah, might have. Uh, I need to draw an island. I really like to draw an island, and I could just like edge champion my opponent to death. It adds me. I forgot about that. And okay. draw an island would be pretty great. I could encounter the citadel. Okay, another cloud post. No, I might be dead here. Just because I couldn't draw, just because they didn't keep an island. I have upheaval too to play. So scary. Hey, you just said it all. Oh man. Oh, if I just kept the island, maybe, maybe just different. They have to have a path though. They'll probably take the upheaval. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, I kept. I lost the Warhammer too, so. If they have no path, I don't, I'm not worried that much. I, I have a factory. Ooh, Karn? Karn Daddy? Makes it, this is a lethal attack.
It's going to be pretty bad. I think they have a path in their hand. I think I'm just dead. I feel like I'm just really dead next a couple turns. I'm going to gain so much life. But this is a lethal attack, so at least it just forces one chump. I think I'm just dead. I think I'm actually just straight dead. I need to draw another upheaval, but I need I don't have an island, so I don't know what I can do here. I took out so many cards too. The problem is I I, I have the spine. I think they have Path of Discovery in their hand. But they might have enough life to play with. I'll give some lifelink. Take it. Oh. They get a little life to play with, but if they hit a creature on top, it's pretty good. God, if I just kept the Warhammer, I think this game would have been a lot different. Okay. So it just depends on what's on top of their deck, right? Okay. Um... I'm just fading a creature on top of their deck. I could just overrun them with like creatures at, at the next turn. Take this one. Take this, I guess. Wow, they just not have a creature on top. They go to one. So they're going to flip a bit. Birds on top. Good. Going to get a bunch of life. Oh no, this is frustrating. I feel like I just like, I, I, I just discarded the wrong cards. I just want to F6. I think I've lost. My small ball game did not work out. I'll just do this now so I can have six. Because <laughs> my plan was just the Warhammer to death and try to get a control, but I only have like a second island right now. I have no islands, I have just all colors mana. They could deck themselves, I guess. That is a possibility. Uh, I mean, they can attack with a bunch of flyers, and maybe just kill me that way. Oh. Get 31. Ugh, this game's so out of reach. One more side, sure. I couldn't even cast up evil. You're perfectly honest. I don't know how I could win this game. I have I took out a lot of cards just to try to like go low. It's a weird combo. At the same time, with my deck is uh, their deck is slow. My deck is also slow. But I mean, they could have a, a bunch of mana rocks. Contortion a little late to the party. I don't know how I'm supposed to win this without upheaval now. But I don't know how they're going to win either. No. I'm going to hang out. I'm not going to give up. I don't, I don't, I don't want to give up. I don't know how they're going to kill me. Actually, I'm not really sure. To be really, to be really honest, I'm not really sure how they're going to kill me. I guess they just can like attack me a bunch. Give deck. Sure. I mean, I guess. They're playing cards for free, so... Uh, Colossus, that's fine. I, didn't, I can hardly cast it. <laughs> I 
I guess if there are plans just to overwhelm me with creatures, you can like kill a bunch of things. I guess the wild grove walkers are a bit annoying. If I draw another etched champion, I can at least block another guy. They don't trample or anything. Legendary. They're just gonna start. I guess they'll just pop me twice. I have to pop me twice. Got it. Do they have enough non land permits to kill me? A couple more, I guess. Like, you guys aren't threatening. I have a 2 2 protection from everything and a infinite chain of creatures. Oh, I guess I can just, like, never deck. With the uh the bow of Nylea. That's kind of interesting. I guess I'll never really deck. Bitter ordeal. Wow. Okay. I don't feel like giving up. I'm actually still not going to give up. I'm very bitter about this. Not bitter. That's not the word. They haven't, like, really... I mean, they have to put 10 permits on the field. I don't even know what's left in their deck. What if the deck is just all lands? I guess, like, Bo and Ilea can put a bunch of permits back in their deck. Oh, man. I mean, not having spines really bad, but the bitter ordeal would have taken, out, taken it out. Oh, they, exiled, they kept letting me keep my islands. It's awesome. I, I need to draw islands. Back. I really wish I kept Evacuation in my deck, but I guess I would have been exiled by now. Like all the rest of my deck. Kill this. It is a flyer. I, I can't let I can't let a flyer live. I'm at nine. <laughs> They let any permanents live, basically. But the bow is, I think it's just going to be the inevitability of this. This F6 kills this. Her. Seven. on island. Eight. Two more permanents and I die. The ten other? Wish I were brought in graveyard. I didn't really think about this. Block a bunch.
guy. One with a machine. That's four. What's left in my deck here? Probably a bunch of islands. I do need islands. Um, I could just top both of these. Eh, one on bottom. Still attacking here. Pretty bad when I put on up. Now I'm actually I'm in danger of decking. If nothing else happens for the rest of the game, I'm in danger of decking. They can just draw three straight cards out of the Sylvan Library. It's kind of nuts. You just play Hyper Genesis. <laughs> uh, I guess. I don't know what they'll name here. Let's just rebuttal this. Because I'm going to lose the rebuttal. I'm, I'm definitely just going to lose it. I'm just dead at two permanents. Just, all right. Well, there's that's a legendary, but they have to they have to cycle through it. There's just no way they can't not hit a permanent, right? Actually, I sure already know the next card in my hand or deck. It's gonna be the talisman. I don't know what I could have drawn. What an interesting deck. <laughs> I guess it's my fault for kind of letting them get their thing out, but. I am a mono blue deck, so. Hey, right, well, that was fun. <laughs> the season's crazy. This season's nuts. The season's crazy. Right, round four of the Penny Dreadful Metal War Colossus deck. Um, I won in two. I don't think I'm going to make top eight, so let's try to win out here. Make this hands okay ish. Need to hit another land. Little Rose is one of those card lands you want to see later after you've played a bunch of Cloud Post lands. Love to draw another land, then I can just kind of pop off here. It'd be like a turn for Colossus' turn. I'm almost playing blue red, so maybe a bunch of counter spells are the future. I see he's getting mana leaked, actually. Oh, maybe not. I see he's getting mana leaked, maybe. Maybe not. Again, I can see it's getting mana leaked. Okay. The two the twos weren't enough. The threes were fine. The four ones fine. I can't talk. It's like so late. <laughs> I'll just cast random things. Wait for something to stick. So let's see, five, seven, nine. This costs two. So next turn I can hold up mana leak mana. Then maybe just draw a bunch of cards as open. Oh, or one with the machine. It's not open the machine. Does it dissipate? That'd be really annoying. Fuck, that's. Draw a bunch of cards. 
three cards, not the worst. Right? Refusing to do anything. Um, I'll post. Okay, I play Witching Well. That next couple of draws. Versus Factory is pretty good. We will get end the sort of standstill we got going on. Your talisman. I would just pop the witch. Uh, Witching Well be on turn. Their turn. Stoke as ever. Drop your cards. Don't need to get back the other Colossus yet. Heal. Here's an upheaval. A ton of mana now. Top. I can just kind of blow up something with this upheaval, can I? No, uh, I don't have to do anything, honestly. Do I? Do I have to really do something? I could do something, right? Okay. Something. Let's just do things. <laughs> I'll play this Karn. Fire Prophecy, you got it. Ooh, this Khan gets a Warhammer. Kind of fun. Witching Well. Witching Well actually has been pretty impressive to me. I have liked it. I liked it for what it is. For what it is, I like it. Ooh, another Cloud Post. Thing. I'm going to equip hammer to the cult this thing. Attack. Alright, I'm gonna get back my Colossus aim and try to cast it. Is free about that. Yeah, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. Opponent didn't do anything. They countered two spells, and but I guess they're just some sort of like blue red control deck. Um, I like Stoke rebuttal. I do like. Champion. It's really hard for them to kill that champion, honestly. A lot of my cards are very good against them. I like just skilling matchup. Just the fast mana through like lands and stuff is really hard to deal with. Mine could be probably bad. I don't know about Edge Champion. It's not really like not really like an aggressive. It's hard to kill. They can't kill it, but they can't kill a Colossus either. Let's just keep it like this. Let's just let's just keep the rebuttals in and see if that's enough. Oh man. So my previous opponent, like, their computer died in the last round, so they had to concede. It's fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been my win. I'll keep this hand. It's okay. I feel like all my towels are getting countered here. All again. Ur Golem's Eye. Yeah, like if I was my opponent, I would counter this talisman. It leads to a bunch of. Oh, wow, really? I really would counter this. If 
I'd probably just counter anything I could. I'll have to draw like a cloud post or something. Redeem, not bad. I don't have any artifacts yet. One more land I can cast as a eye. They wanted to do something, but they didn't. Ooh, Muzio. Muzio. <laughs> Ooh, it resolves. It's really dead. Fire Prophecy is probably still in their deck for whatever reason. <laughs> I guess it does just draw cards, sort of. Poor Muzio. No, no. I haven't yet, I get to activate Muzio, but I feel like if I activate it once, I will, I will win the game. Just based on the fact that I've activated Muzio. Okay, well, Witching Wells finds lands, I guess. Bottom both of these. Metal Colossus is now cost 10. Ooh. Oh, okay. Get another land there. Fourth land. Start casting things. Eventually they have to actually do something, so I'm not, like, not super worried yet. My opponent has had more counter spells, right? They've had every counter spell in the book. Probably like a negate. I like to guess. I want to guess the counter spell. Ooh, maybe it resolves. Counter flux. Power sync for two, sure. Just for two. Oh, okay. I wanted to tap a bunch of mana. Ooh, I get to, I get to ask two spells this turn. All right, one talisman. We get another. Okay, fine. The talisman. Outer flux. You got it. Everything's been answered so far. My hand's just like so bad. Switching well. With resolved, can't believe it. I can't believe it. Um, um I like to up. The factor fiction, okay. Rise from the tides, huh? There's a way to kill me. I do have the tab out for it. I'm going to go for it. Completely lethal. I do have a blocker and Vadim. Only eight. At least I know I can bring in like um I can bring in evacuations now if I really wanted to deal with this. Maybe. What's of a Thunder Raptor? Oh that's the thing that That's the really big like thing. Counts it's like a better beacon bolt. So, Edge Champion seems so good in this matchup. I don't know why. I don't know why I really want to play it. <laughs> I had three Colossus in my deck. That was, like, not ideal. I bring an evacuation question. Actually, will. 
I've got the mirror works. Could be. I don't know if that's really resolving. <laughs> it could. You never know. Muzio seems like it's just going to die, so I will cut the Muzio. I think that's it. I think I, I don't want to bring an extra. I'm not really sure if I want to bring an extra champion. I don't think I can really deal with it, honestly. If it came on the battlefield. It's been really good so far. I really like that champion. Well. I'm just gonna run it. I think it's just badly. This. <laughs> and you get the quick like uh glimmer post, cloud post starts. That's the way you can be control decks when you start casting multiple things in a turn. It's a little weird. But it has the best card, turn one star, which is Cloud Post. It can lead to very fun things. I'd like a turn two. I set this up. Find a Cloud Post, Glimmer Post. Another well. I guess I'll take this. Ooh. You could annul this. Is it an all legal? I don't even know anymore. I don't know anything. Let's... F E P C U O Hunter. Null is legal. Right, look at that. I get to cast this first. I could pay for a mana leak if I really wanted to. Um, and if it resolves, I get to try to resolve an Urzai Golem. Or Golem's Eye. I say it wrong every time. I'm going to say it wrong every time on purpose. Maybe not on purpose. I'm just going to say it wrong because I just don't remember how to say it. Stoker, well, this costs two. It's pretty cool. Although, if I pop this Witching Well, then I won't be able to do that. But I do need to draw cards. The plan is to kill him with Urza's Factory. Cards. I, mean, I can just hold up Cancel. I can double Cancel now. One land away from just actually just actually try to resolve this. Let's see what happens here. If they, if they come at me like with a power sink, that'd be pretty annoying. I think counterflux would be pretty bad here. Counterflux I couldn't counter. Ooh. Is it going to be a power sink? Three? Counterflux can't be countered. Yes. Why did they tap four mana? Did they overload it? I'm going to try to counter this, or protect this. Oh. Ooh. I really want to resolve this Bedeem, so next turn I'm going to just hold back. They try to slam like an evac- uh, Oh, that would be really bad if they did that. Sure. I guess they didn't want to discard. Okay, I have literal counter spell now. I have, I have metal craft, so I to slam the Dean. Oh, 
want I just want to draw a couple cards. I just want to draw some cards, really. Cool. We'll stoke about all this. I'm gonna protect this. I'm gonna protect this like it's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Must protect this at all costs. Sure. It only deals three. It's a one four. The fact they have burst lightning in their deck too is really interesting. I have like six creatures in my deck, but I guess I can't really know that. I'll talk about all this too. This is fine. This is totally fine. Okay. They have so much burn in their deck. Wow. <laughs> I guess they need to kill, like, I guess they play like a counter burn strategy, but these spells aren't good against me. <laughs> Alright, well, the trap will set here. I, I still get to draw four now. This is the payoff. Um... I guess I could try to up people next turn. It wouldn't really do anything. I guess I could just Urza's Factory them to death. No. <laughs> I don't have to do anything, because I have an Urza's Factory. It's two cost. One. Big boy. Tracker fiction, sure. Crackling Drake. Fire Propsy Factor Fiction. So these two have to get split. Um we'll do something else. No, I don't want that. I think something like this. This is a useless card. This is kinda whatever. The Crackling Jake can kill me at some point, so give him like the strong Crackling Jake power sink combo. I could pay for any power sink, so it's really kind of a dead card. But it's really just fact or fiction against Crackling Drake. What's this one? It took the Drake. I guess that's fine. It gets exiled. That's pretty bad. That's fine. Still not budging. Have to make a guy. All right, you're getting some damage. So the plan is, um, they have to like eventually tap up for the Trackling Drake, I'm gonna fight it with a rebuttal, and then, um... Guess I'll just... No, no, that one. No, like this. I guess like this. The two mana counter spells, yeah. Definitely can't take I guess with all the two mana counter spells, they can like kind of protect the uh the Drake now. Well, didn't miss it. Fine. I have an upheaval. I have an upheaval deck. But we'll just start over. We'll just start over now. I gotta use the evacuation. They wanted to. 
Um. Okay, that was a perfect draw, by the way. <laughs> if you didn't know that, that was kind of the perfect draw. I'm gonna upheaval. Replay all my permanents. Um. This. one. I just drew that. Um, I don't need all these islands, I guess. In two islands. I guess they can draw that fire thing. Um, that one spell. What is it? Blitz of the something or other. That could be a really annoying card to have. Let's see. <laughs> I get to get in for ten. Um, maybe I draw. Maybe I just draw another Colossus. I can evacuate my uh, guy too. In case something crazy happens. I guess he'd live next turn because he came to life. I play this other thing. Yeah, the only card they can draw is that blitz thingy. Might just slam it here. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's up the bag here. Activate. Like I said, it does save them a turn, so. Draw. Play this. Play this. Um. Um. Draw eleven cards. What we got? Um. I cast this. Uh, I, I kind of whiffed on this, honestly. <laughs> this is kind of big whiff. We do have another upheaval and another evacuation. Like, that was kind of a big whiff. <laughs> I drew a lot of islands. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, I just discarded a bunch of islands there. I'm gonna keep another evacuation in my hand. Why not? Why not? I guess. Okay. <laughs> well, drawing 11 cards is good enough. Alright, here we are with the corner finals um, of my uh, Colossus run. I did not make top 8. Um, really bad. But 2 and 2, I didn't think we was going to make it. So it was a clean cut, 3 1. We're going to watch the. The rest of the rest of the tournament. Right. Let's get some data on everyone. So we've got um Suli who was playing a Sultai midrange deck. I maybe we'll look at that. Opponent, Fur Patty, who was playing Quest for the Holy Relic. Mono white sort of like combo deck. And there is the aforementioned quests. There are a bunch of just free creatures, like Ugin's Conjurant was like a zero drop and a bunch of one drops as well. Tabor Sentry is also a free creature. Wow, Garrett, this is a weird little cat. A bunch of one drops. Um, I think something like Lit Hawk is like legal. I think it's like really good in hoppers. I don't know it's going to trigger one of these. You could probably get this going by like turn three, I guess. But yeah, I'm going to decide Suli's playing a Soul Type Midrange deck. Um, kind of fueled by things like, yeah, Sylvan Library. Um, Planeswalkers like Jace and Garrick. Birds of Paradise a big deal. If you tried to kill you, just kind of like big creatures. Like Beanstalk Giant, Tassiger, things like that. But I don't know. Um, if there's a couple of free creatures out here. This relic's going to go off. And what do they get? Argentum Armor. The old 
The old uh, Zendikar combo here. Alright. Our Tedmar is going to put on a creature. This is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Take out a permanent. They can just take out the Sylvan Library or a land. They're going to take out the green source of mana. It's already a big deal. This guy's a really big deal. Alright, we are all in on this uh, Hunted Witness here. I think uh, the difference between this deck and other decks is that they don't play Core Outfitter. So if somehow the Argento Armor falls off this creature, or this creature dies, they can't really move it back. So that, that was like an old school thing back in Tempest Standard. All right, Jay's going to draw a card. I don't think drawing a card is great here, because they might just die. But they do have a turn, tur two turns here. If I was fighting the Argento Armor, I might just kill the Sylvan Library. Okay, it's a sort of life's bounty. Um, good at protecting this Hunted Witness here with the Argento Armor. I probably just attack Jace. You can't really kill your opponent right here, so I'll just kill this random little guy. Everyone else can kind of go in front. I guess the armor's gonna take out another forest. Don't forget to level up. No, they have to keep the mana up actually for uh, the bounty. Up against it, they need to produce a creature or maybe just a removal spell for this. Although the rune soul won't be good because of the ace lid. So they have to kill the ace lid and the other creature. That's not enough. Burn Pack's gonna win game one. That was a very quick start. Like I said, about a turn three hit from the quest is like what you're kinda aiming for. But I mean looking at the, the, the list here, if they just if they can just kinda like take out the threat, but they don't have another way to uh, the armor just kinda um hangs out. No core outfitter, like I said. Sideboard, I guess this is an interesting sideboard. They can actually morph into a, just a straight white weenie deck. They have Honor of the Peers in their sideboard. Deafening Silence, uh, Banisher Priest, things like that. Not too bad, so you can, if you don't really like, if you think they're going to gun for your combo here, you can kind of just do a switcher and just play a very normal game. Of deck. Uh, on the other side... Back to me. Oh, I thought it was Return to Nature cards. Uh, Moment of Craving is pretty good against the kind of little creatures. You could sever something, some good stent. Not a lot of board wipes though. I don't know what black board wipes are actually legal now. But very kind of like interesting. They they have, I guess it was this cyber, they have like a, a thing in mind. They're worried about artifacts. So they're, they're really worried about something maybe like a tempered steel deck that has, doesn't even exist right now. Just because no one's really made it. Ember Seal is kind of a deck to be watched for eventually. Maybe I'll make a deck tech for that. I don't know. Not one of my favorite decks. It is a fun deck to play, but favorites. It's, it's just an aggro deck, really. Um, but yeah, they didn't. This deck doesn't really like kill things early. There's like single one ofs here and there. But uh, Sultai Charm is, I think, the big card here. I, I love Sultai Charm last season. This season, it's just as fine. Every color is monocolored here. It can kill the uh, gentle armor pretty well, so Salty Charm would be a big deal in this. I had to guess. This top eight consisted of the, these two matchups here: Argentum Armor, White, and Sultai Midrange. There's also on um, aggro side, they did a new red white cycling, cycling deck from Trevor. That's kind of really good, honestly. <laughs> a good deck. Uh, let's see what else is. Um, have uh, a wildfire deck, blue red wildfire. There is a zombie deck. The zombie deck I lost to in the first round. Uh, a mono blue tempo deck includes. Well, not even not even playing Tempest Gin. Kind of. Fairy Vandal, Terramander, Fairy Seer. Very, very similar to the deck we had last season. Um, honestly, just really the same. They've been lacking a sideboard a little bit. Ponza, well, there's a Ponza deck in the top eight. There's also a blue red tempo deck. Um, again, a very a little different. So kind of more of the honor bound version. That's Fairy Vandals, Crackling Drakes. Um, 
I don't think Improbable Alliance is legal anymore. They are playing a new card, Iron Craig Pyromancer. Because whenever you draw a second card for each turn, it deals 3 damage to any target. So just Lightning Bolts on Lightning Bolts. So a bit different of a deck. But nice to see some innovation to an old archetype. Even though there's so many new things, why don't you just do the new things? I guess it is kind of a new. Iron Craig is kind of a new card, so... Get on the game twos. Ultimator is going to be in the play here. Let's see if they have the turn one quest. That's a really big part. All right, Healer's Hawk. So it's going to be a very normal start to this game. I don't think you want to be in the normal position against this deck. I think you want to just try to go fast because, like I said, there is there is a there's a way I can see it where they can kind of play this like uh just regular life gaining or white weenie plan. I think they brought in the honor of the pure, so they might have just done the switcheroo here and gone for the, just the normal creature. I have thirty million creatures and I'm gonna attack you with them. Moment of craving, I take out the healer sock. Birds paradise summons another birds. No third land, though. It's big. All right, so they did play the quest. They still have the honor. So I guess you're just doing both. That's fine. I guess that's fine, yeah. You can do more dynamic or dynamic of threats. All your creatures are just like 1-1. One, 1-mana. One, one so you can play that game, but you might get swallowed up by the card advantage engine of the, the mid-range deck. Consuming Vapors, actually a strong answer against Doom Traveler like cards or Hunted Witness. Except Garrison Cat, the third Doom <laughs> Doomed Witness, Hunted Witness, whatever you want to call it. These very annoying guys that leave things behind for one mana. Actually so so fun that, that, that they have another version of this card. The vapors again can probably eat the cat the cat here. Really annoying. I thought it would be pretty great, but now it's just kind of annoying. N another no lands again for Suli. Garrick Wildspeaker. Um, I guess going to untap two lands, but I mean the Flyers kind of get in, so this is interesting because if uh, the Sultime Interdict doesn't have an answer to these Healer Hawks or Spirits, they're they're just going to lose the Garrick. I think if you have a card to kill something, you gotta kill it now. Okay, no. So I would have, if they just kind of let the Garrick go, I would have just made a 3 3. So that way you can block the soldier. All right, everyone's coming at Garrick. So see, you just kind of give up the deck, the card. I don't know. It's like really weird. Like, what are you holding? I think I would have just made a 3 3 there. But we'll see what they're holding. Right, drown on the lock, gonna target the life, Aceless Life Bounty. I guess they could have saved their creature still. Maybe not. Everyone was going at Garrick. I probably would have just killed the Spirit, though, in response, or the Healer's Hawk. You don't really want to block with your birds. Sultai Charm, gotta dig for some answers here. Looking for just lands. Draw two, discard a card. Tough choice. They're going to be in Aether's Mouth. That's actually a tough choice. I don't know if it actually would have gotten rid of Aether's Mouth, but that means their hand's much, much better. birds or they could be Tassiger. Tassiger is a kind of big deal right now. Doesn't do anything about the flyers but Tassiger is pretty great. I kept moment of craving and drowning the lock. Yeah, Tassiger is a big deal. Another ace lid. So the quest is going to go off here. Um, They could definitely target one of the flyers and just kill the Tassiger. Wow. I kind of forgot that that uh, Arjun Barma was right there. So maybe they got a little punished for not just take, dealing with the uh, the quest here. But you know, damn if you do, damn if you do. They take out a bird. That's. <laughs> I guess if anything, like they could take out a bird here and a bird there, and the game would be over. But always got. 
need to have an answer to all this. They can active Tasker, but they're just going to get the worst card out of their deck, which is probably something they couldn't cast. The tough spot. You need to deal with our Denim Armor, but you can't let it go. You can't let it happen. Right, for all expertise, it's going to return up to three artifacts or creatures. So they can bounce here our Denim Armor and a couple of tokens. That's actually a good. This is not a bad deal here. Um, the Mono White deck can trade their Ace Lid for one of the tokens. I don't think it's worth it. I stand corrected. I guess the flyer is worth it. I guess we'll just like uh, amend my statement. All right, no cast. You might as well attack. I don't. I don't see not attacking. You might as well just attack. You can't block. See now this guy comes down. Now now you're kind of hold up. Not really. You can put him double strike soon. All right. So there's a the use of Argentum armor in the hand. So the brawl second piece was pretty nice. I didn't know it actually bounced creature. Shriek Ball, um, got to take out the student. Flyers are still there, all right. Finally the attack comes. The flyers have to be dealt with pretty soon. All right, Garrison Cat, just annoying, more annoying guy that stick around forever. Right now, the Hasser pretty much has to stay back, though, otherwise, he might just die. The Shriek Bot can probably get in. Again, just an Argentum armor in the hand. That's what Brawl's up to. Soul Tide Charm, I'm going to take out the Honor of the Pier. Probably the best choice. It does kind of like. You're to the opponent, so the clock is just one more. One. Clock's around one more. We get one more turn. Alright, Student of Warfare actually kind of a big deal. When you have enough excess mana, nothing to do with it. Already a 3 3 first striker. This is an argument for actually kidding one of these flyers, too. But if you just draw another removal spell, you're still not at lethal. You have the birds, too, that kind of hang. So there's an argument both ways. Just instead of taking out the uh, thing, you could just take out a creature. Alright, another Shriek Maw. I have to take out a flyer now because see now you could have had like two flyers dead yeah they might have like a five five for a striker but i mean you can deal with that eventually i got the healer's hawk so the spirit might get all the way i mean the bird might get in the way too but the spirit might go all all the way Precarious 3 life. Ace Balerin. Find an answer, please. Find an answer to the spirit token. Alright, birds can get in the way, so... Not the end of the world yet. The student warfare is going to be huge. Ooh! Benevolent bodyguard can kind of... Protect the uh, spirit. I would just block the bird, maybe. I don't know. It depends on what they're trying to go for. Go for the face, yeah. You're kind of good on mana now, so... Yeah, the Sultai deck needs to draw something to get out of this. There isn't really any, like, board wipes from what I understand by looking at this list. Alright, Jace for a Jace. I love Jace Balerin. Um Obviously, it was fun with the uh, Sun Titan back in the day, but I'm glad St. Triple gets like a pretty powerful Planeswalker. A couple of powerful Planeswalkers in this right now. 
I'm also I'm gonna get WD forty for my chair. It's so squeaky. I can hear it. It doesn't really pick up all the time unless I talk and do it. Talk and. I am getting WD. It just annoys me. So squeaky. I don't even know where I would apply it. I guess it's like the joint parts. So if the spirit token gets chumped again by the birds, um, Sultai, the Sultai deck could probably be in danger because this uh, student can just kind of get pro black from the benevolent bodyguard and just die. Unless there was like a response. Carefully, Suli is going to use all their resources to get out of this jam. Shimmer, possibility, please find an answer. The game's gotten closer the longer it's been. The Sultai deck has kind of like gotten out of their like early mana troubles. Really developed the board, but they've got to pull, find an answer. This deck is like just. I don't really know. I, I think this deck just doesn't know like how to kill their opponent. There's just a bunch of like fun cards and who knows what's happening, but it doesn't like seem like a cohesive strategy. It's kind of like a bunch of stuff. This card's fun. I want to play this. This card's fun. I want to play this. That's what it seems like. I mean, it's almost like how I would build a deck. But at least I have a, like an idea of like what I want to do. The deck, I guess, kind of wants to play Planeswalkers and maybe win like that. for the response from the model white player. Are we in danger of losing this game? Um, I think the spirit is like the only route to victory. You tend to keep pushing through with it. It is a bit rough though, um, like, the student will just like, one touch from the student and the Sultai deck will just explode here. I wonder what the holdup is, I wonder what they're really thinking about. I mean, if anything, you just come in with the spirit, and then if you have anything they play, you play it. You don't use your bodyguard unless it kills the spirit. You have to attack here. You can't not attack, yeah. You gotta get rid of bird. Like next turn, like the bird chumps and you get they get another turn, but next turn if they don't chump here, this is pretty much lethal. It threatens lethal, so they have to block. I think so he's gonna activate the uh Cassiger here. Probably to get the worst per permanent or just any card, right? On land card. So they probably give him like Wow, just now, I mean, probably just gives them Shimmer, the worst card in the right now. Just dig for something, but Shimmer's the one card that's like doesn't like damage your game plan. And they gave him a Birds of Paradise. Um, so they're just saying, yeah, you can chump, I guess. I don't think I agree with that plan. They're electing to keep the Jace around, so each player gets to draw a card. Sure. 
Ooh, moment of craving. Um, probably need to get protected by his connection on bodyguard. I don't think um, you let him gain two life. You're just so close to winning. Can't let them gain any life. You have to like treat every point of life as like throughout the victory here. Also, Shaker, um, probably just gonna take the student. Also, you're basically a blue black version of Banisher Priest. How I see it. Hazard is getting in. I love it. Tasker getting in over like something that can't be blocked like the Shriek Maz is really interesting. If the cast the Osso Jager. Can't ever level it up, but I mean you got it now. Alright, what made away from actually casting as Argenta Marmar? Um It's a legitimately a big deal. Cost six to activate or equip and six to cast, so it's actually legitimately a big deal on this board. Eric could actually overrun soon. Beanstalk Giants here. This actually could be a big deal. Alright, the agenda is coming down. I think Sully can just go to one here. And maybe just the overrun's enough. Let's see. No, don't. Just go to one. No, okay, here's a, here's the thing. Here's your plus with three and trample to be uh six, twelve, the flyer would have been uh fifteen. And yeah, they would have just died. I mean they're gonna die anyway, I guess, but but yeah, I, I guess they're just it's just lethal or what. It's just, it's just safe, I guess. But you gotta overrun here. You gotta overrun. I, I I think Overrun's really good. Wow, what a what a victory! What a comeback! Eric is good. Planeswalkers are good. I can tell you that. The power of Jace just getting a couple extra cards and then the gear coming down. I kill um, big beanstalk giant. Good. Look at game three here. It's been a very back and forth matchup. I think um, the mono white player just wants to get a quest out really early and just kind of power that out. Multi deck might have trouble just like. Having that happen. So the affirmation quest is here. We're looking at turn two or turn three uh, activation from the quest. Definitely the strongest start you can have here. Can we creature uh the quest deck will pop out here? At least two. I have had to guess. Kinda of like hypergenesis, the worst card you want to draw is their Genomar. I think it only pulls from your library. So if you draw in if you draw like both our Genom arms in your really bad. Shimmer possibility looking for a response to all.
Looks like our Jenna Barber is going to get attached. One more free creature would do it. Creature attacked. Who's conjured for one? This relic is going off on turn three, right on time. Gonna put on the ace lid, and that's gonna take out a land. That's feels like it's gonna be game. Gonna take out the dual land. It's a tough spot to be in. Um, the best draw would be like a black source, and then you can kind of like drown in the lock the guy, or maybe just disenchant our denim armor. It's so yeah, the armor can take out the birds, but I probably do. It's a very strong card. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Armor takes out the bird. And yeah, I I I don't know what uh Suli can draw here to kind of beat this out. Not even like a uh, Sultai Charm would kill this. You're at two. The Argentum Arner has just done enough. Alright, it looks like it's a uh, Relic Dex and I can move on to the top four. Going to join um, the cycling, the right away cycling deck, the zombie deck, and I think it's a blue red tempo. So, congrats. All right, we're back with the uh, semifinals of the back tournament here. Um, we're going to watch uh, zombies versus blue red tempo. The zombie deck we already I played in round one, I got stomped. <laughs> but it is. From the semifinals already, I've been playing against Blue Red Tempo. Very different look from seasons past here. I would, I would say it's like, it's more on the. Um, got like Fairy Vandals, Crackling Drakes, and. This new card, Iron Craig Pyromancer, which whenever you draw a card your second turn, a uh, card each turn, you'll three damage to any target. So it is on a creature though, so it's a, it's fallible, of course. And otherwise, the deck's full of just kind of burn spells, counter uh, controlling cards things like that. On the other side, zombies. Um, what can I say? It's just like a bunch of zombies, dark rituals, a couple of removal spells, and that's it. Like, slam, <laughs> slam these guys into the red zone. Hopefully it works out. Bagrack Rule, Fallmire Knight, Undead Augur. Undead Augur is great in this deck. It kind of just, like, lets you kind of draw some extra cards, get some value out of your dead creatures. Also, the one of Corlash, Heir to the Black Blade. It's pretty cool. It's uh, power and toughness equal number of swamp to control. So yeah, just a classic aggro versus sort of like a blue red controlish deck. Blue red deck hasn't actually lost a match yet today. But the zombie deck did take a loss to the blue red deck, so a nice little revenge match for the zombie deck. See if they can kind of get out of this. Interestingly, with, even with like the Iron Craig card and the Fire Vandal, they're only playing one Fire Prophecy. Fire Prophecy does let you draw an extra card. The turn, so I thought there'd be more of those. It probably is better than Incinerate in a way. Your whole deck's about like drawing two cards a turn. I, I maybe I like to maximize all that. Fire Prophecy is just really good. I think. And all the one drops are here. The auger gets mana leaked, but the other guys are kind of hanging out. No real like board wipes main deck for the blue red deck. Um, so it's going to be like a one for one thing. Electrolyze doesn't really deal with the two twos very well. 
at least by itself, and take out one, two, two. You really want to look try to take two things. Not hitting two. Or it can hit them, it just won't kill them, I guess. Crackling Drake. Pretty big body here. Funnily enough, the Baron Moor is gonna like ruin things like the file. Um I guess the Defile wouldn't be that bad. If you just kind of attack and they block the diagraph cool, then you just defile your guy. This would be a good death baron turn. Lord of the Undead though. Still okay. The Foul Wire Knight's kind of unblockable, so you at least attack with that. This zombie deck can play so many lords between Cemetery Reaper, Death Baron, Lord of the Undead. You can even play, go higher in the curve and play something like a Liliana's Mastery, which I think is legal. Alright, Beacon Bolt can you know, take out the Lord of the Undead. That's a good card to hit because if they get to on top of it, they just start grave digging back their creatures. It's for the best lord. I think it's the best lord for sure. In what's in what's legal, but they're all really good in their own ways. I think Lord of the Dead is the best one, though. I mean, making creatures with cemetery is also pretty cool, so they all have their merits. I just love grave digging. Love digging up graves. Doesn't love a little grave digging. Right, Sarker Man's another one mana 2-2. Two, two. Bold attack with everyone. You can have just oblige and block. Um, because you're not really getting there if you don't block. And you're never gonna really gonna attack. Unless you feel like you can kill your opponent from there. It's definitely not like a two-turn clock, so you can kind of just take this, maybe just attack. You're never planning on blocking anyway. Looks like they passed the block. They're going to take five. All right, Beacon Bolt from the yard takes out the... 1-1. One, one. Of all the things to take out, it's really interesting. See, I, 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 did, I, I didn't like the no block, because now you're not attacking, so... You are, I think they're worried about the file, which is very fine, but you've got to kill a creature here. You've got to just, like, take the risk. Because if you were going to attack, why didn't you not block? Yeah, you might have lost your creep, but I mean, you ain't really gotten anywhere, and your opponent's just gonna like slowly kill you. Block is here. Like I said, the file could come, it would still trade with the uh, the diagraph pool. Fairmore, not a swamp, not a clean pit. And be careful what lands you put in if you're gonna put in these like lands matter seven cards. Blue red's gonna go to. Five. Cemetery post combat cemetery reaper. Probably just getting mana leaked. Interestingly, didn't play it in main phase. Just after the fact. Alright, Pity Riddle's not bad. If they have a way to draw a card here, like Electrolyze, that'd be really strong. Not the case, I guess. Attack with the two twos. Um, I think a Desperate Ravens would be pretty nice. Um, I 
Another defile would be kind of devastating here. Is there going to be the chance where the um, blue red deck kind of turns a corner here? Iron Craig Pyromancer is out. And Death of Ravings, it can take out the uh, the, to the token here. This is pretty nice. And there's, and like I said, these things have flashbacks. So there's two more activations waiting for the blue red player. I like an attack. I think you have to attack. No, no zombies really have haste here. So, you gotta attack. Yeah. This is gonna get out of hand in a hurry. The mono black zombie deck does not have a lot of removal main deck. This really defiles. I'm not sure if like something like Dark Salvation is legal. Let me just take a look. That would have been a great include. But, you know, we're still early in the season. Maybe not everyone has like done their research yet. I even like learning about new things. No, Dark Salvation is not legal. Another Iron Craig, that's big. I mean, they could just shoot the creature and shoot something else. Next turn, I mean, this is probably just game next turn. They have another Desert Ravings in their yard. And the Neutralize just gets cycled. Is that the best cancel ever? Is it Neutralize? Especially for this deck, it seems great. Wow, the Sargomancy just... What do I want to use? I'm so tired, I can't even think of the right... Um... Comment for when something's like going wrong and something was just a little more wrong. Uh, stoking the flame. No, that's not. Oh no, I can't think of it right now. It's, it's, it's almost like seven a.m. for me. <laughs> I need to. I should sleep, but I I am committed. I'm gonna record the rest of this. What is the word I want to use? Blue Red's gonna win. Nice comeback. Um, you're not dead until you have zero life, so it all worked out in the end. Ever game two, Mono Black can honestly no duresses in this deck. That's really interesting. They could play something like Eternal Taskmaster to like kind of uh, fight through the counter magic or the the burn spells, removal spells, whatnot. A lot of fun one ofs here. Palace, Palace Siege is pretty good again, sort of like a repeatable Grave Digger. Timer it calls for the dead, good at like stopping board stalls. Man, this card's not. Um, Unearth 2, another just reanimating spell. Uh, on the other side, I guess the blue red deck can bring in like more board wipes, they have uh, Pyroclasm in their deck. Um, this is pretty much it. They don't need to bring in much. They seem to have a fair amount of removal main deck, so it doesn't seem too bad. Missing Chain Lightning, though. Opted for Burst Lightning. Chain Lightning's pretty good if you're red. I'm gonna start eating chips. But the game started already. Second game here. I'm just gonna open the bag. I'm gonna eat a chip. They're really loud. They're really crispy chips, but I hope you stay awake for the rest of this. Right, I need one chip. One or two. 
Sorry, it's so loud. You can't eat just one. All right, zombie deck. One man, two, two. What are you gonna ask for in the zombie deck? Only sandbar. The red. Now every color has their cycling land now, so decks like these are pretty good. Because you can play both um, Forgotten Cave and Lonely Sandbar. Now a nice follow up with the uh, Undead Augur. We'll get to replace itself if it dies. It's a fresh new Two blue, not where you want to be at, but not bad. You really want a red, you really want a red source of mana so you can start killing things. Back for four. No flash blocker here. Maybe kind of like wrong to just kind of chump your one two into these guys. As if we are probably getting oh fear vandal. Speak of the devil, he shall appear. Looks like uh, Fran missed a land drop here, so. Three is like the magic number for the, the zombie deck. You really want to just hit three mana so you can start chaining lords. That's one of the big deals about um, zombie deck is that after the third turn, they can just play lord after lord after lord, and the creatures just never stop getting big. But you gotta get that third mana first. Everyone's getting in. Even the mass token. Maybe not. Alright, I think for the don't lose my guide chunk. I hope it's with Mariclared. That means uh, a 2-1 block can come into uh, the help out a little bit, so... Maybe another Defile? The only card it could be. Right, maybe we're... Maybe we're mistaken. The red playing very careful here. No red mana yet. My favorite round is going to grow to a two. I just play out the sprite here. Let's see how another counter spell. But it's the go white plan is activated here, and I would imagine a third mana coming down, and then like a lord, and then your blocks are super awkward. So you might have to chump this next turn. But if like there's not a third land, then knows. That's going to be brutal. 
Death Baron would be the worst. Bile Blight, though, takes out the Fairy Vandal. That's just as good. I would attack with everyone here. Fox Break gets in front of the Augur. Augur's going to off random. Are the red sources here? Maybe a pyroclasm works. Yes, nice pyroclasm. Good little four for one. Gonna stabilize. That's why I, I wanted to play the Lord. I guess, but though the Lord would have just died too anyway. We would have gotten in for a bit more damage if there was a Lord to be had. It would have been like two. Another Reaver. Maybe they just don't have any Lords in their hand. I guess not. Besides, get cycled. Looking for an answer. Right. Iron Craig, Pyromancer comes down. We saw last game how the card just kind of took over. Might be the time again where it just kind of like dominates the game from here on out. It's an 0-4 blocker. That's the good part about it. Then every extra card drawn each turn was just going to like start doming. Death Baron though going to say no to blocking. Death Touch, big deal. There's no one mana to draw two cards. So... This is a really safe attack. All right, precarious one life for uh, the blue red deck. I'm gonna have to kind of get another pyroclasm out. Only two in the deck. It only counts for the first time you draw your second card, so they can take out the Death Baron, but still need to have another blocker in place. Ooh, Electrolyze is the perfect card. It draws an extra card, and then it's going to take out another creature um, with the Pyromancer trigger. Great card to draw. The red deck gonna steal the victory again. Roll zombies. I put something to say about that. Fairy vandal. That's an actual clock. Mayfade's Insight gonna trigger the Pyromancer, the Fairy Vandal. I, I think the corner is turning here. Like now you have another Insight in the graveyard, so it's another trigger that you can have, so you can kind of control when you can draw your cards. And Zombie Deck only has one card left. There's no real card demand other than like a Foulmire Knight. It's not really great. Corlash, a big old 6-6, six -six, doesn't care about um, Iron Craig, but it gets mana leaked. Can we see a Dark Ritual? If you had Dark Ritual, you could pay for this mana leak. one with the last card in the deck the hand is maybe it's another land yeah it's a land 
another fairy vandal, another insight. Alright, it's not looking good for this uh, monoblock layer. They find Lord of the Undead, but that's not going to be long for this world. <laughs> the Iron Crag is just waiting to pounce with this Kemmerson site in the graveyard. Yeah, this blue-red deck is just like rolling on all cylinders now. Well, oh, they discarded the Beacon Bolt. Wow, what a value draw, too. Beacon Bolt does not mind to be in the graveyard. So far, the clip's gonna go to two on a red, or sorry, blue red deck. Very nice to be at two instead of one. I thought that really matters. This, this game's gonna end really soon. <laughs> the zombie deck really needs to just find a way to push through, but with no like haste creatures, like the Iron Craig can just kind of do its thing. Like what is the what is the weight? What is the contemplation here? I don't know what they can draw here. Lord of the Undead, sure. <laughs> this is one of the times like, yeah, you got it. <laughs> Blue red deck once again uh took it out from the jaws of the feet to kind of get there work that's a way of just using all your resources onto the finals again it's gonna be against the mono white deck so stay tuned all right we're back with the finals of the uh first apac tournament of this season uh it's gonna be mono white quest for the holy relic versus blue red Tempo spells. I, I want to call it like blue red like spells. Is it spells good? The tempo version is more like you play a small threat and you kind of protect the threat. This is more of like controlling sort of version with iron the the new is it iron Craig pyromancer. Really impressive so far. Um, I've actually really liked the deck. Like it's just done enough to kind of just like weather the storm and then kind of take over with fairy vandals and the iron Craigs. Excuse me. But this uh, Holy Reload deck is coming, but a really fast deck, a really fast deck. So, Let's see what happens here. I guess Blue is going to be on the play. Right, turn on the quest right where you want to be. Um, there is counter magic though, and the blue red deck. So the creatures doesn't matter if it's counter or not. They would still get the counters. But if there's no creature in the field, there's no point. Thank you. 
All right, the Winnings gets Mana Leak, but like I said, the quest doesn't care if the creature gets countered. I think that one of the better ways that um, the Blu-ray deck can kind of deal with this um, sort of thing is if they can kind of kill the creature. But no, it looks like if the white deck can kind of produce three creatures here, the healer's hawk's going to get really big. And there's definitely eight free creatures in the, the white deck in Chamber, Servant, and Jim's Construct. Or... I think it's Constra Conjurant that cost that can cost zero. Pretty redundant deck here. Ooh, no creature for the last, at least not in the cast right now. The wording on this is weird. I can't remember if like if they kill like two creatures like with their spawn. I don't know if you have to target it. It doesn't really like target a creature. But I think the effect is like, you sack this, and then if you let it resolve, then it, it could pick any creature. So it's not really targeting a creature. Like, once you let this resolve, the armor is going to go onto the battlefield. It's going to attach to a creature, like, immediately. You can't be like, oh, you're going to attach this creature? Okay, in response, I kill this creature. So. I guess they don't have any burn spells, because they're just tapping out, letting these uh, fairy grow. But I have to imagine that. The white deck has one more creature to play. Alright, here's another ace lid. And this quest is getting popped. Here we go. Let's find our genome armor. Make a 7-7 seven, seven lifelink flying killing machine. <laughs> Probably gonna take out the uh, unblocked fairy token. Or the untapped fairy token. Fairy guy. I don't know. Struggling to live here right now. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to deal with this here. Uh, Blue Red has a big problem, like I've said in the past, with like large creatures outside of like a bounce spell or something like that. So, yeah, they can kind of burst down one of these things, but it's going to take more than just one burst lightning. Turn one quests are really just like a big deal. <laughs> The deck functions so much better when you get a turn one quest out. So that, that's the key here. Um, in the sideboard, white's got things like Honor of the Pier would be fine if you're trying to like beef up your creatures a little bit. I don't know if they bring like Deafening Silence. They don't really cast two spells a turn all the time. A lot of the spells cast once a turn and you can just draw two cards off the single card so too bad on the other side the blue red deck can bring in some of nulls maybe for like that turn one turn one or um quest at least on the play they can do that on the draw it's not as good um no artifact removal really for the blue red deck kind of interesting to think about when you um I guess no one's really worried about Tempered Steel card decks yet, so maybe it's something to think about.
Yeah, this this uh relic deck. Like two more chips. Maybe away from the white. You're probably hearing anywhere in my Brewer deck for me on the play for this game two in the finals of the APAC tournament. Tapland met by the turn one quest. This is going to be a big deal. The best they can do with the blue red deck now is just to kind of like make sure there's no creatures on the other side. But with 12, count them, 12 Doom Travelers, basically, it's going to be pretty hard to kind of stick a creature. All right, double quest, double trouble here. I guess if one quest goes away, you can have the other one as a backup. So Garrison Cap, the new Doom Traveler, in a sense. And people say Wizards are out of ideas. No, there's plenty of ideas. Let's make Garrison Cat. All right, turn three Iron Craig. Um, not really impressive right now. There's a bodyguard. This thing can kind of go off. These things can kind of go off next turn. Another bodyguard. All right, Mono White needs two more creatures to get these relics online. Interesting Pyroclasm, um, you always just want to save the cat here. I think you want to keep it alive as long as you can. Your bodyguards are going to die anyway, so you might as well just like save something. Okay, so they're going to give one of the bodyguards pearl red and just let the garrison cat die. And the human token. Yeah, that's not too bad. Can't get the most out of it for the most part. Alright, another garrison cat. Quests the quests. Both quests are at four. Alright, one land. Only one card left in the hand. What could it be? It could be another land, or maybe one of the Argent of Armors. <laughs> That'd be really awkward if they drew one of the armors. All right, just for raving, that's where looking for an answer to all of this. I guess I can target the uh, bodyguard here. It's kind of enemy number one.
Alright, new wins conjure for five, making it a five five. Alright, so so yeah, once you activate the quest, you have to it doesn't just target a creature. It um the whole thing resolves and you can't really target the creature at that point. I really like putting it on the soldier. They can have like a repeal or something, you never really know. The Arjun is taking out two lands, I like the idea. This is scary. I don't I don't know if the blue red deck can kinda of come out of this, just getting double double stone rained here. And also dealing with a five five Ugin's Conjuring as well. That's huge. Could be game right here, that's it. Mono white relic. What sort of holy relic wins? Very quick fashion. Very quick. Congrats. Congrats to Murder Patty for that victory. This kind of transfers right into the final thoughts of my deck. Or later. A later deck deck. Sneak preview. Deck deck. Um, do this now. How did I have this sorted out before? <laughs> Let me do this real quick. This would be really quick. <laughs> so... I cut this out. Do it live. Okay. All right. So went uh, two and two with this deck today. Could use some little tweaking here. There, you don't need that many one ofs. Um, I liked Witching Well a lot. That was one of the cards I was kind of like, I didn't know this could be good, but it was pretty good. Um, to serve as a kind of like a a weaker um, Hedron Archive, but this all smooth out your jaws a little bit, so it's not too bad. Never got to activate Muzio, but I think it could be good. Padim, I know, is good. Temporal Gateway is always threatening. Um, yeah. Cyborg could use a little bit of work, too, maybe. I like Edge Champion a lot. I might move it to main deck. Especially that good. Um, pretty good. The thing is, the problem with like, playing like creatures in your main deck is that they don't really help you power out Colossus. Because really, the, the key to this is like really getting one of these like 13 like artifact dorks out and then you just cast an upheaval and you win the game so you really don't want to fuss around with other things although upheaval is not the end-all be-all winning but like one game i had upheaval like three times and sometimes um they don't always work like if you, if you play like a defensive upheaval and you don't get to play your land first then you're kind of actually behind after that point so you really need like an upheaval plus some some number of drops that's like the most important so, I don't know. Maybe I actually might add more to maybe like a tech and guild lotus in, in the mark breaks. I don't know. There's not enough of the four mana ones. I think there's another one, but let me see. Like, I mean, there's a three mana like colored ones. We're using that. I'm glad I didn't play Star Compass. I'm glad I played the Talismans. This is really good. Like I said, they add colorless mana, so it's really important. Power Stone Shard is one card I couldn't think about, but you have to play those in multiples. The first one's never, uh, never that great, but the next, everyone's after that is really good. The Border Post is a consideration as well, but there's no blue Border Post this week. Is it? No, all the others are, are the ones weak. No. Border Post are legal. Oh, Field Mist Motor Bars, that's legal too. Maybe I could play that. I don't know how Border Post Mana works, but that could be pretty good. It does add blue mana. Um, I'll have to think about that. I don't really think about that. <laughs> it's awkward on a... Um, it is kind of awkward on the upheaval, because they do like add... They do power out Colossus quicker, but I don't know if they like arm <laughs> mana sources. You have to have uh, basics, and I, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I only play like 13 basics. 
Anyways, we'll, we'll see. Midnight Clock could be consideration, but I don't really want to shuffle my hand. The Midnight Clock could kind of slide in this deck somewhere as another card draw engine. Plus, we can get four drops that add two mana. Yeah, nothing really exciting. Just, just the goal, the eye goal. But yeah, anyways, the deck is fun. Um, it's definitely a fun league deck. I will try to work on some of these one ones, the one ofs here, but most of them are pretty good. I just got the Muzio, but you know, it sounds so good. It's such a good ability. It's it's basically like one one with a machine on a stick for the most part. And you get to put something in for free. Imagine just digging eleven cards and just getting an artifact. But you can also just whiff really hard too. So. Hey guys for watching, appreciate it. I'm gonna get some rest before the next tournament. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you're interested in the deck, you know, take take it for a spin. And don't forget the like, follow, subscribe channel. There will be more videos to come. Thanks guys for watching. Have a good one.